We are diving into second half sleeper picks, players you should target that have a great opportunity to perform for your fantasy team in the second half of the season. We break down all the latest news, the Thursday night football matchup, and we have a lot of fun on today's show. Do not miss a minute. Make sure you like and subscribe right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's baseball time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. The best worst moment of our show's history. (laughs) Woo! It's baseball time. Oh, man. As the Philadelphia fans tune out of the show, we welcome you into the Fantasy Baseballers. Uh, what happened, Philly? Oh, Mike is Mike has never been. You got the Eagles. Let, let's be clear. There are three situations <laughs> here on the show today. There is the true baseball fan that has celebrated and enjoyed the night. Mm-hmm. Me. Then there is the <laughs> lifelong baseball right, fan. Yes, Jason. Jason, yes. who is, I mean, oh, you man. forgot to wear your gear, but I'm I sure just, it'll be on soon. Yeah, I, 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 I can't believe that I didn't find the shirt in my closet. I mean, favorite so many. players, top three on the top team. Top three I on mean, the team is yeah, definitely the right dude, now. The dude the with current. the goatee, yeah. he's so good. Yeah. The rookie. Yeah. The guy with the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and Love then, my Diamondbacks. And then on that side of the desk, there mm-hmm. is the man who I think hated the Phillies more than even liked the D-backs, <laughs> Mike the Fantasy <laughs> Hitman. Look. Oh, man. Philly fans are a very special breed. Yeah. And they – celebrate in the fact that everyone dislikes them. Like, they enjoy that. But then these moments pop up, and everyone else is going to dunk on you. Yeah, well. You, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. It was a uh, it was a special evening for us Arizonans, uh, the improbable. I saw that if you had bet on the Diamondbacks to just make the World Series and you put 60 bucks on it, it would have paid out, like, 4900 just to make it. Those are some long odds. But this is not the Fantasy Baseballers. We will talk fantasy football today. And we have a fun show because we're talking second half sleeper picks mm. on the show today. <laughs> Wait, you, you doing some, I uh, was watching some highlights? No, I'm just excited to talk yeah. about uh, the sleeper. You just okay. threw a mm, in mm. there. And we have Thursday Night Preview today, Hungry for More. Uh, Matthew Betts has taken the day off, <laughs> I think. Philly fan. Stay out of traffic, Matthew. Um, it's, yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day. All right, uh, follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Follow the uh, lifelong baseball fan, Jason Moore, at Jason FFL. So many good baseball tweets. Uh, Love you can my always... <laughs> game of baseball. <laughs> my game. America's game. <laughs> I mean, you like uh, hot apple pie, so I'm surprised you don't like baseball as much. I just love eating, Andy. At FF Hitman, at Andy Holloway. If you want to join the uh, Discord community, it's free, ballersdiscord.com. And uh, it's one of the largest and most active. It is the most active fantasy football community in the world over on Discord. So ballersdiscord.com for that. There is a new Dynasty podcast that has released. Jason recorded that yesterday. And. Let me tell you, if if you listened a couple weeks ago uh, here on the Fantasy Footballers when we did the redo of the first two rounds, uh, th- that was such a great episode to kind of really push comes to shove player versus player um, in redraft. We did that on today's Dynasty episode where we looked at the rookies and said, okay, if we were going to draft them now, you know, where does Puka go? Where wh- where does he slide into those, you know, four first round wide receivers and and you know, same with uh, HN. There's just so much good debate, and I think it's a, a very uh, important, good episode. So yeah, while we were while I was walking out of the studio yesterday, you like yelled to me, and you're like, "Hey, what would you do? Would you take Gibbs or would you take HN right now in a rookie redo?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's tough." I was like, "Oh, I gave you an answer, but it was it was tight, um, crazy." Yeah, and reminder: since waivers just went through in our main league and in your leagues this morning. Drop it like it's hot. This There's no better time than right now. See who people are giving up on, who are letting go. 
uh, to the waiver wire because there's, there's been a name or two in our main league every single week where you're like, eh, I'm, I'm going to bid on that and that player I want to get tomorrow. And let's just give you a further pro tip on the drop it like it's hot because you're listening to this show. You probably are in a good league with active managers. Before your waivers run, <laughs> go look at who was just dropped, like prior to them running. And <clears throat> after they run, scroll up a little bit and see who was dropped beforehand. Because it's not just, you know, a lot of times people will pre-drop players and those guys get missed when you're dropping it like it's hot and looking at who was dropped. So scroll up and look at who was uh, dropped without a waiver pickup. Yeah, it makes sense. And um, let's move on. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. You care to comment, Jason, or are you just giggling <laughs> just, for the fun of it? Yeah, it, I mean, I, it wasn't seen on video. We had that uh, delicious Hungry for More intro graphic, but you saw me cackle and yeah. laugh you, because I looked at our chuckles. waivers. I looked at our waivers, and I was like, the guy I wanted the most was Taysom Hill, and I didn't get him because I bid uh, I, I, I bid $3, and he went for 38 and so I went to look. I was like, oh, okay, so I, I was clearly way mispriced on my bid, and I went to look at all the bids, and it was – there are one, two, three, four, five, six bids in on him, and it's zero, zero, three, 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 thirty-eight, thirty-eight. Josh, I'm gonna burn this fab. Yeah, I bid three. You bid three. Um, sometimes that's the hey, way it goes. Our the economy of our league. I mean, <laughs> it's been pretty wild this year. And you know what? The thirty-eight's worth it if it wins them a week. Could be potentially. Could be. All right, hungry for more. Players we've seen flashes from, some nibbles. You're hungry for more fantasy football goodness. Mike, I'm going to hand you the baton. Jameer Gibbs, baby. We Please. Finally, we finally got to see Jameer Gibbs, which – Gives me more of that. <laughs> which, in a uh, very negative game script, if you happen to catch any of the Baltimore versus Detroit matchup, it was uh, a behind whooping <laughs> for the Detroit Lions – but in the process, we got 10 delicious targets for Jameer Gibbs. He turned it into nine for 58. He also had a, a you know a good touchdown run where we got to see the burst, see the speed. But it's more of 87% of the snaps. I know David Montgomery was out, but 87% of the snaps coming off of injury where he, Gibbs had just missed two games right into 21 opportunities. 20-plus uh, points, depending on your scoring format. The running back three on the week. Like, this is the guy that we have been waiting for. And all signs, at least that I've seen, point to Montgomery being out for another week. And we get Monday night of of Jameer Gibbs versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Give Gibbs 20-plus opportunities in that game, and good things are going to happen. I think, and I'm it, hungry. I think it would surprise people to know that Jameer Gibbs is number two in the NFL in targets per game at the running back position. Sure. Like behind Alvin Kamara, it's Jacobs and Gibbs tied for the second most targets per game at like 5.6. So, you know, it it's not – you come into the, into the season with expectations that are through the moon for a player that was drafted in the top 12 picks of the draft. But it often – when we've said this so many, oftentimes rookie running backs, it takes some time to get going. So let's hope you're right. Let's hope we uh, are well oh. fed. I mean, I'd, I'm not saying for sure because Dan Campbell and Arthur Smith keep doing weird things with their highly drafted uh, running backs, but all signs point to Jameer Gibbs eating again on Monday. Jason, uh, you've got a name here to share for your Hungry for More candidate. Yeah, he is uh, the star actor in the movie The Plan 2023. <laughs> uh, Ramondre Stevenson was my, uh, you know, we, we talked about this f starting five weeks ago when he had an, um, a massively horrific schedule of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back matchups. Said to trade for him after that, that it would go better after that point. And after that point, it's gone better. He has been on the field the last two weeks, 65% of the snaps both weeks. 
Last week, he had a touchdown vultured by Zeke, but he still ended up as a top 20 running back the week prior. Um, he was the running back eight. And I, I want this plan to succeed. He is someone that I... You're invested in. I'm invested in. I, I, I went through the walk of my plan, I grabbed him at that week. I need more from Ramondre Stevenson. The, the thing that I love is that even though you watch Zeke's involvement and... He's inside on the five. The targets are still Ramondre, and the snaps are dominated right now by Ramondre. You know, you, there's it was 65-35. They, they, they're not running two back systems here. It's like one of these guys is on the field, and it is the vast majority of the time it's Ramondre Stevenson. What I'm hungry for more of is more efficiency. He looked good in the receiving game this last week. I really want a good performance this week against the Miami Dolphins, and that is an exploitable run defense. Um, right now, schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back position. Uh, they are not good. They're 24th in that, and they're allowing a first down on 28.7% of opponents' rushing attempts, which is 31st in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, Ramondre is in the identical category of, I mean, it's Ramondre, Josh Jacobs, and Damian Pierce. Those are the bottom three in yards per carry of any running back that's had at least uh, 79 carries this year. So you're looking at players where – you know, you say you want more efficiency. How about some? Right. I mean, that's what we're saying yeah, from just Josh. just a little bit. You know, Pierce <laughs> doesn't get anything in the passing game. So I'd rather have Ramondre than Pierce at this stage in the season. Jacobs and Ramondre, if you can't run on, you know, you, you're you not efficient on the ground, you're going to need the passing game work. And we said that a couple weeks ago. We're like, well, he had six targets in week one. What if he went back to that? Well, six targets last week, six targets this past week, caught 11 of the 12 targets. Woo. Uh, this this is an opportunity, and I think I think you'd be really disappointed if he doesn't do something on the ground against Miami this week. Yeah, for me, I'm hungry for more Trey McBride. Yeah, tight end for the Arizona Cardinals. T McB. T McB. <laughs> Look, eleven targets over the last two weeks for Trey McBride, and that was with Zach Ertz as part of the roster. The Arizona Cardinals pass the ball to the tight end position. Uh, they're they're fifth in the NFL in targets to the tight end, and Zachers just went to IR. So I am optimistic about just the way this offense functions and the fact that you're going to put the ball into the hands of your more athletic second round tight end that came into the league with a lot of pedigree and opportunity and ended last year uh, on a bit of a run. I mean, he had a performance against Atlanta where he was the number two tight end on the week. Yeah, was it like seven for seventy with a with a touchdown? And so people were asking me when I brought up Trey McBride this morning, like, you know, do I want McBride or Dalton Kincaid? I'd rather have Kincaid because I'm going to attach myself to Josh Allen instead of uh, Dobbs eventual Murray in on a team that's losing. However, they also asked, do I want Logan Thomas or Trey McBride? And that's much closer to me. I feel like maybe your floor is a teeny bit higher with Logan Thomas, but your ceiling's higher with McBride because mm -hmm. you have an athletic player that might make a big play. So, I am hungry for more Trey McBride. You've seen it over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, a lot of snaps, design screens to the tight end as a part of this offense. And uh, you're going to see him out there 60, 70% of the time moving forward. And I am hungry for more opportunity there for Trey McBride. So that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Uh, cornerback. Nope. No. 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 Baby back ribs. Oh, yeah. Delicious. <laughs> Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. All right. Let's move on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. You want those uh, baby back gibs, right? No. 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 It's all right. It's all right. You it's don't right. mind? It's okay? It's okay. Yeah. It's Thanks. Like a five. Yeah, we don't have a sound for a five. Out of a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have all sorts of reports out of Tennessee. Oh, yeah, we do. Ryan Tannehill not likely to play. I think that if he's out there, I would be shocked. I would retire. <laughs> You'll retire. I would just mad retire dogging. on the spot. Uh, you owe us a retirement, Mad Dog. Yeah. Did you see the D-backs chanting? Yeah, in I did. The, in the dugout. But, I mean, if if 
if Mad Dog is a man of honor yeah. and is true to his word, he will actually retire. Yeah, I, I think that's... So, I mean, just saying that if he doesn't... Right. It's retire or liar. Yeah, it's if you don't retire, then you are not a man of honor and you're just a big, fat, fat, phony liar. So <laughs> Double fat? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I, yeah. mean, I'll, I don't know. I don't think that'll happen I, I think he will follow be true to his word right yeah, yeah. right otherwise yeah. For, for sure yeah, yeah it's gonna happen yeah back to the titans uh ryan <laughs> Tannehill not likely to play and there were some reports early this morning that will levis uh bananarama himself may start and be the primary quarterback but then vrabel uh, in what's being passed around today said I never said that Will Levis would be the starter. Both <laughs> Levis and Malik Willis will play if Ryan can't. Fun. Yeah. That's... So who do they play this week, guys? Yeah, no, uh, absolutely you want to pick up the – I believe it's the Falcons? Yes, the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, that's who you want. Yeah, yeah, pick them up, play them. Because honestly, if you, get, if you spun – you know, we have the wheel of shame, and if they have a wheel and it only can land on two options and it's Levis – or Malik Willis, I want the Falcons on both of those. Oh, but there's three options. Oh, they could all they could both play. Yeah, yeah, and that's truly banana ramas. Actually, that's true. That's the, your path to four interceptions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, the Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. He had a new MRI. It showed no additional damage to his throwing shoulder. Hmm. Don't laugh. His status for the week is up in the air. The team is calling him day to day. He's going to work on strengthening. His not re-injured arm. No, right. not not additional injured. Currently, right. Currently same injured. Currently, soups injured. Just not anymore <sighs> than when he was medically fine. Yeah. So Deshaun Watson, waiver wires, right? He should be out there. Just he should. You should not have been thinking or hoping for a no. return to glory here. No, I mean, watching him throw the ball that this past week. I mean, yeah, he's still making. His the same bad decisions that he's been making since he's been a Cleveland Brown, but he also he couldn't throw the ball. Matt Eberflus, Bears head coach, said Roshan Johnson will Man. return to practice on Wednesday. Oh, great! Oh, okay. But remains in the concussion protocol, so he's. That's so, a I think he's back on the field this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the normal progression. You're you're still in the concussion protocol when you get back to practice limited. Um, so that's the expectation. It looks like he'll play. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Second Half Sleepers. I didn't know we had a drop for that. We got we got drops on drops, man. We got drops <laughs> on drops on drops. Uh, this is fun. Uh, second Half Sleepers, it, you might as well call the segment Trade Targets. Because if you're bringing up a name on this segment, it's somebody that you believe is underperformed in the first half of the season or has been injured or, you know, the team, the quarterback, dependent parts weren't functioning to the maximum. So, look, I, I didn't see yours till just now, Mike, and I'm I'm actually – I can't wait to listen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you think I was in agreement? Yeah. I oh, I no, good. Goodness, no. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, you're up, Mike. Oh, okay, sure. I will go first. It is the the quarterback of America's team. It is Dak Prescott, who it's been a very strange, a very weird start for the Dallas Cowboys of blowing out the, the Giants and the Jets, then somehow losing to the Arizona Cardinals, shellacking the Patriots, getting crushed by the 49ers, and then we finally had a good – fantasy performance from Dak against the Chargers where he had the rushing touchdown uh his highest uh, passing yardage of the season his yards per attempt was at 9.1 in that game which like that's what we need that's what we're talking about from Dak there seemed like a a renewed focus to get the ball to CeeDee Lamb because it, there had been strange usage for him as well but that's what we got to do and why I'm bringing him up here is just looking at the schedule here, moving forward, the Cowboys are tied for the third best schedule. And when you're adjusting fantasy points to the quarterback position, they have essentially two. They have one really tough matchup, which is it's the Buffalo Bills in week 15, and that's on the road. That won't be great. And the Giants in week 10, which because the Giants have been improving. But other than that, it's very plus matchups for 
quarterback scoring. On top of that, it's the third best schedule for fantasy wide receivers, the 10th best for fantasy tight ends, and yet it is fifth worst for fantasy running backs. So they're facing a bunch of pass funnels. Correct. I mean, we're talking you know, the Rams, Philly twice, Detroit is in there, Washington. So, and I mean, the, the playoff schedule, which week one is, is the Buffalo Bills, but then it's Miami and Detroit, which you got to throw on those guys. That's, that's how you get it done. So Dak is likely on a lot of waivers out there and, or he's just chilling on your bench. But I think that he is a quarterback that over this second half can get it going. I'm not saying Dak's going to be a top five guy over this, this time period, but if you're struggling with the quarterback position, I think that Dak is someone you should be looking at rostering right now just in case things do start spinning in the right direction. Now, it, what, it's interesting. I was just going to ask, what if I what if I told you that Dallas was one of the fastest pace of play teams last year under Kellen Moore, and this year, in neutral pace, they are the slowest. Yeah, no, it, that's Mike McCarthy. That definitely makes sense. How's that working? For the offense, not great. Yeah, I mean, what are they sitting at four and two right now? Uh, that look, yeah, five and or four and two. Yeah, yeah, it's been harder to watch. I mean, I wouldn't say Dax on the list of uh with Derek Carr and Deshaun Watson of players that I can't handle watching, but he's not on the list of players I'm actively seeking out right now. And I it's, get it. it's unfortunate because that's been an offense you can count on. The schedule is wide open for them. Mm -hmm. So you are you have a situation where either he's a second-half sleeper or this team is floundering and you probably have question marks around Dak as the future of the franchise. They just, I feel like they just need close games. Like they've had no th – this last week – against the Chargers was a close game. But it was like every other game is a blowout win or a blowout loss. It's it's weird. It's been very weird. I have leagues where I am looking for a quarterback that I might be able to count on in the second half and have been bouncing around to streaming options. So it's a it's a good name to bring up. We're going to take a quick break and come back with Jason's second half sleeper. All right, we're back looking at second half sleepers. One other bit of news that um, I skipped over, but Jason wanted to bring up the Marvin Jones news. He has uh, he made a decision to step away from the Detroit Lions, and then the team waived him. And yeah, I think it was just an agreement, just a mutual There's, agreement to move on. It and sounded then, like there was some some family personal life stuff that's. That's getting in the way for Marvin. So but this, no it, longer in the mix for snaps. Yeah, yeah, and and this is you know for fantasy football. And the reason I wanted to bring it up, it's it's obviously irrelevant for Marvin Jones, not a player that you were playing necessarily, but he has played forty three percent of the snaps, and he is the field stretcher um, for a really good offense. And now Jamison Williams, where this is second half sleepers. Jamison Williams yeah, fits right into a second half sleeper candidate, where it's like. My issue with him is he has just not been playing enough snaps. He, you know, he he has been a guy that has had his role established while they wait to build trust. Well, with Marvin Jones gone and forty three percent of snaps of a field stretching role opened up, if we you, trust you. We trust you. Yeah, like let's get, maybe it forces them to you know. Uh, Did you have see that his trust numbers earned. last week by chance, Jamison Williams? Yeah, because his snaps were they were up in the forties uh, the week before. He was at 23, but did you see his numbers? Uh, tell me. What if I told you he had six targets? Ooh, that's nice. I, tell me did, he yeah, caught I, I'm at aware. least three yeah. of them. Yeah, as uh, one who was very invested in Jared Goff having a good game, I saw them. Uh, he had as many receptions as Al Borland. Oh, Al, how many receptions? <laughs> tell me you had at least three receptions this week, Al. <laughs> Not this week. Okay. Not this week. No, I mean, one of them was, you know, it's a nice catch out of bounds. But, yeah, zero receptions on six targets. That's probably hiding away the fact that, I mean, six targets for Jamison Williams on just 44% yeah. of snaps, it, there, there is a second-half sleeper possibility there. Yeah. The, sure. only, the only worry there is that it reminds me of his rookie season when he had nine targets through all the games and caught one ball. Let's, let's, let's just catch the ball, okay? Yeah, yeah, it uh, you know, helped Jared Goff. Honestly, him being on the field, when you look at the equation, like Marvin Jones was dropping passes, taking snaps from more explosive players, this for Goff is better to have to, th that talent out there. So, yeah. Jason, your second-half sleeper, uh, I forced you into a tandem because I, I wanted to go with 
another player on the same roster. Yeah, you wanted to bring up Hollywood Brown, and you saw that I had already put in Kyler Murray. So the 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 truth here is the second half sleepers the Arizona Cardinals offense. You can add Michael Wilson to the to the mix. We talked about it a little bit on waivers. You brought up Trey McBride and and the way that things are going to go. Kyler Murray will be back, I think, in two weeks. And when he is back, you're going to take an offense that has looked like a legitimate, schematic, modern NFL offense. There have been open plays designed to get wide receivers or tight ends the ball. You're talking non-Cliff Kingsbury stuff. That's what I'm talking about. It's like Cliff Kingsbury was running a, a, a fast-paced, uh, which is good for fantasy, collegiate style offense that really didn't work great and Kyler Kyler was great for fantasy in that offense but he had to make a lot of that work I am more hopeful over what we have seen from schematically speaking of the Arizona Cardinals offense and Dobbs has done an admirable job as a guy that was last year off the street and this year traded for the week you know he, he wasn't on the Cardinals team and he stepped in and he's done an admirable job but he is not Kyler Murray. Yeah, and, they're they're just throwing this out there for you to ammo to what the offense is doing. Bottom third in pass rate, twenty uh, sixth in targets to wide receivers under Dobb because he's targeting the underneath players and producing at twenty twenty fourth in points per game. So good scheme, but not good results. Right, and I think that when Kyler Murray is added to this, there's going to be a, a massive shift for the success of the offense this defense can't no, no matter how how much effort and heart they put in they don't have the talent to really stop people for four quarters in fact if you watch these games it's like the, in the beginning of the games the Cardinals are like hey they're competing they're looking good they're giving it their all and then they just run out of gas and the second half get stomped by their opponents Kyler's gonna have to throw he's gonna have to keep up and and try to win these games and and you know, the, the real question for Kyler for fantasy football is what about the knee? What about the running? Mike, you brought up in the offseason some of the, the statistics and the horrible uh, the historical data. <laughs> well, they are in most the horrible, horrible data. In, in yeah. most of them, they were uh, bad a, for a quarterback returning from ACL. Right. And, and the, the dip in rushing. But if you really dig down into that, you know, the, there weren't a lot of those quarterbacks coming back from the ACL, they weren't mobile rushing quarterbacks to start with. They're, so, yeah, they, they stayed in the pocket. But Deshaun Watson was the one example that really st stood out to me. He was a guy that was rushing for 500 yards a season, gets that ACL, comes back, and he was very, very mobile, very good for fantasy right back off of the ACL. And so I do think Kyler will include the rushing. And when I talk about the schematic fit that we've seen from the Cardinals that is nice, where Dobbs is getting it done is in the designed runs for him. They are doing it, it. It makes me really hopeful that this is a perfect system for Kyler to come into. And so I am stashing Kyler. You, you talked about, Andy, you've got leagues where, you know, you drafted Deshaun Watson. You're saying, who do I rely on the second half of the season? I think Kyler is going to be good. And if that's true, if Kyler is good, as he's always been when he's on the field, then Hollywood Brown is his number one target is a great, acquisition and should be really a top for sure a top 20 wide receiver the rest of the season once Kyler's back but I think he's got top 12 potential all right my second half sleeper is a wide receiver that has been outside the top 78 in four or five weeks but has the sixth easiest schedule for wide receivers in the second half and um uh, was just on the buy. So it's T. Higgins. It's a player that you drafted early in fantasy drafts. It's been catastrophic. Uh, <laughs> it's I got T. Higgins, and it sucks. I think I saw a I – I, I don't have it in front of me, like the ADP. Um, maybe you can pull it up. I believe every second round wide receiver has been a disappointment for fantasy players. You might want to look at that. Oh, pretty sure. much every second round player. Yeah, I, maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was literally almost everybody in the second round, but that includes T. Higgins and Devontae Smith and, and, and for a while there, Jalen Waddell and maybe still Jalen Waddell. Like the players you took there. 
Yeah, you've got Devontae Adams. Cooper Cup was injured. You've got, uh, as far as wide receivers. In the second round? In the second round, yeah. Um, oh, because Cooper Garrett, Cup went later because of the injury. Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Jalen Waddell. Sure. Yeah, I mean, just uh, – well, Olave's in the third, according to our ADP data that I'm looking at. But, yeah, it was. it's not – the second round was – a lot of problems, even at running back, you know, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry. Yeah, and, and you look at not just the schedule being the sixth easiest for T. Higgins. You have a history of success. You have a player that is going to be heavily targeted in the offense. Um, obviously healthy. He needs to be on the field, but he's had some extra time off going into this uh, this final run. And then your your fantasy playoff schedule, you get to play Minnesota at home. You get to play Pittsburgh, whose secondary has yep. been – just the worst it literally is the worst in terms of fantasy points given up and then then you have a, a potential shootout against Kansas City which look their defense is very good but you know we saw from this past week like you know there's the potential that you could be in a battle there in championship weekend so it's exciting to think of you know T Higgins as a buy low candidate that teams may want to rid themselves of that they might be putting him on the bench you know that's one of those things go watch go go watch a team and what they set their lineup as Saturday. And is T. Higgins sitting on their benches? Because that'll tell you everything you need to know about how they view that player. Because he's been a lineup lock type of guy for a long time. So to me, T. Higgins is that player that sticks out as, you know, as as a guy that doesn't necessarily love the wide receiver two options in fantasy. He's one of those guys you need to pick up and and you're going to be very happy. I think. And then just let's – we'll be brief here, but a bonus second-half sleeper pick from each of us. Uh, Mike? Uh, I'll throw out JSN of this is when we were – even – I've been – Tyler Lockett was one of my guys. I thought he would still have it. He has been underperforming drastically, and but JSN still had me get on the field. But then we, we – when people were saying, can I drop JSN, it was – no, if you dra if you drafted him, you have to. Maybe you didn't realize it at the time, but now you know. Moving forward, if you draft these first round rookies, you're doing so to hold on to them for 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 at least the first chunk of the season to see if they do anything. It, this isn't a well. If the rookie doesn't show up in week one or two, I'm going to drop him. I mean, it's like imagine. I guess Addison had the huge touchdown week one, but it's like you you can't drop these guys because they start coming through over the second half of the year. And if Tyler Lockett continues to be disappointing, there's production to be had from the Seahawks, and it it might be JSN coming in and stealing it. I'll throw Fat Thor out there. Uh, <laughs> we're talking Josh Jacobs. You know, they, he eventually uh, got into shape in the movie. I will not. Yeah, that's true. That's not my argument, <laughs> but that's true. And look, it just honestly, it comes down to the fact that like Jimmy Garoppolo, their starting quarterback has missed two and a half of their of their seven games so far. The offense is not going to be as efficient without their starting quarterback. Uh, you know, they did not put up a lot of points. They're still in the mix as a team. And I think Jacobs, you know, this is a player who's getting more opportunity at running back than anybody else in football. And so if you're on the field, like last week it was 66% of snaps. That's because you had a quarter of garbage time where he wasn't on the field. Adams was off the field. Previously, it's been 80-plus percent of snaps. You just have to trust the fact that a player that's out there that much, who catches the ball that much, is going to deliver. Yeah, I, I agree completely with Jacobs having a much better second half of season. I'm going to go with a sleeper we mentioned briefly on yesterday's waiver show, Tajay Spears, rookie running back, day two draft capital pick for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this is a player that he's shown flashes. He's involved in the passing game. So far this year, he's got games with targets of four, 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 five. Those are great numbers for a running back. And he's, you know, had a – last week he had a 48-yard reception. He's got the juice. He's young. He's athletic. And the real sleeper issue here is as we come near the trade deadline, which I believe is a little spooky this year. Friday the 13th? No. No. Halloween. Oh. Which, yeah, it's it's That's also up. spooky. Um, if Derrick Henry gets moved because this Tennessee Titans team says we're playing for the future, then Tajay becomes the future – today so let's follow that discussion up before we get into tnf preview just with the other side of the coin like we it's absolutely possible that derrick henry they move on from him they just let go of one of their best defensive players you you have you have your head coach saying i did not say i'm starting will levis how dare you you said that 
Um, it could go real bad for Tennessee, but we have not talked about Henry. Because if Henry's traded, the, the team that I keep hearing it, that makes so much sense and needs it tremendously is Baltimore. Like, this is a team that— It feels like the only one that, when you look at all the teams that actually make sense— Like, do you target Derrick Henry knowing that there are two outcomes? There's either Derrick Henry's just Derrick Henry in Tennessee this year, which is good, not great. Or he's going to a Baltimore offense where, look, the competition for touches there, like, they're happy to throw Justice Hill— onto the bench for all but a snap and Gus would get some work, but it like it would be the Derrick Henry show in Baltimore. Yeah, this this happened last year with Christian McCaffrey. You know, oh, it was like gosh. oh what 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 if he goes to a, a contender, uh, you know, Baltimore's in the running, the Niners are in the running. Do you trade for him and, and hope? And then he went to San Francisco and was the dude and won people uh, you know, championships. It was great. Um with Derrick Henry it's a little dicier simply because if he's not traded and Tannehill is gone. You expect really right, bad right. production from the Titans in general, and he's going to cut. You know, like Tajay Spears being a a sleeper target is because he's you know he's on waivers. Like he does, he's this this costs you nothing, and then will become relevant if he gets all the opportunity. Not that he's going to be a sensational superstar. Derek Henry is going to cost you a lot to acquire him. The only good news is, you know, I, I know Mike, you've brought this up. Their playoff schedule for the Titans is great. It includes mm -hmm. two matchups against oh, the Houston Texans. Houston twice. So uh, you know, I I don't mind if you want to call your shot and and try to get a Derrick Henry, Baltimore Raven, and end up with a uh, you know a runner up consolation prize of Derrick Henry twice against the the tight the Texans in the playoffs. But I do believe it is worst days ahead for Derrick Henry along the stretch run of the season if he remains a Titan. Which I will, looking at the, the the game log, you had Tannehill miss some time last year. So week eight and week nine, that was Houston and Kansas City. Derrick Henry was the running back three and the running back five. Yeah, one of those weeks they gave him like 100 carries. Uh, did both, he, yeah, they gave, he had 33 opportunities. Uh, and Do you then, remember how many? And then you close, he closed out the season with a game against Houston, Houston and he was the running back nine, no Tannehill. But this is this is a much different situation with with uh, with Spears on the field so much. If you had to guess, top of your head, do you know where Henry is on the year so far? He's he's still a. I would have guessed running back twelve. I'll put him like like a middling running back too, because he cause, he's thirteen. Cause of one but I guess out. they had the bye. They yeah, had the bye. So, so he's thirteen higher. even with he's the bye. He's thirteen week. with the bye week, and do you know? The last three games, Derrick Henry is on pace for uh, 1,500 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. So <laughs> He's a king. <laughs> you know, 314 opportunities is still the pace on the season despite the snaps to Spears. So we're thinking about – we did get some more news. Jerome Ford, Mary Kay Cabot tweeted, uh, high ankle sprain, left the locker room, still wearing a right walking boot, and Ford is expected to miss at least a couple of weeks. So Pierre Strong went in fantasy waiver wires. Kareem Hunt will be the guy there. Let's talk Thursday. Thursday night breakdown. Well, Thursday night we get some Baker on Thursday night. Tampa Bay, they're now at 3-3 three and three after the loss to Atlanta, and they travel to Buffalo. We're, they're just sitting at 4-3. and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus eight and a half. The over-under is 42. Not a high over-under, but a big line. So the Bills are uh, projected for 25.3 points, 16.8 for Tampa Bay, who has been reeling. Both teams have been reeling. So you would expect this would be a great get-right situation for the Bills. The defense for, for Tampa has been very good this year. Very like, good. Um, you know, their losses, uh, I remember the Detroit game, they still made some plays on defense, lost to Detroit, couldn't score on Detroit. Then they lost to Atlanta, but it was 16-13. But Atlanta's offense also not that intimidating. So from a matchup perspective, you're going to face a much more difficult task with Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and company. Are you expecting this to be the get-right game for uh, the Bills? I don't look at it that way. I mean, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, pretty stout, adjusting for schedule, fifth against quarterbacks, fifth against running backs, first against tight end. So 
no, I I don't expect a, a like Josh Allen to the, where we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. There's Josh Allen. You're never benching him, but it's well that matchup. The, the Bills are the Bills are just. I mean, like who are you can't possibly bench anybody. It's like Allen Cook, Stephon Diggs. I got like move. I would move the conversation to to Latavius Murray, who saw 45 percent of the snaps. And wait, he he started the game. I missed that note. Yeah, but he 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 played a lot less this game than last game, and Cook ended up having yeah. a big one. I those players are players that are per, the the matchup matters completely. Davis, Kincaid, James right. Cook really hasn't had big games unless those situations have transpired. So what do you expect? <laughs> uh, for for me, I, I don't expect a great uh, offensive production here from the Bills. They haven't looked excellent. In the last three weeks, they are averaging 19.6 points scored, NFL team points scored. They seem a little broken. Still. They seem a little broken. The the uh, But they had a three-game run of 38, 37, and 48 points and that so, we saw the potential of. And, and you know that they're great, right? Like You know they're going to figure it out because Josh Allen will figure it out. But we've also seen this Tampa Bay Bucks defense be really, really solid. I think that, you know, they they took a step backwards last year, you know, or at the end of Tom Brady's career when he's throwing it 750 times. And this offense helps this defense uh, this year for the Buccaneers. So I don't expect it necessarily to be a get right game um, in a difficult matchup. They they seem like they're a piece short on offense. They seem like they need a better wide receiver, too. So you're sitting Gabe Davis. I am sitting Gabe Davis in this matchup. I have him in our league of record. We are actively trying to set him in this one. James Cook last week had a big game. Uh, he's been a running back two this year. The matchup is tough, like you said. He was the running back eight last week. But then you, the the lows are low for James Cook. Yeah. It, 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 it's really hard for him to get into the end zone. He has one rushing touchdown this year, and he's got one receiving. Those were two nice games. But other than that, it's it's not been as great. I do think I'll be the one to call the blowout. I think Buffalo eviscerates them. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I think this is the game that things get right. So he, you should, so you should start Gabe Davis. No, no, I don't I don't think so. But Kincaid and Cook, I I have confidence in. Uh this is one where they're at home. People have been talking and I just prime time. Yeah, I just think like the Buffalo defense in prime time, some short fields, turning over Baker Mayfield. Um I I I'll be the the lone wolf All there. Right believing in the bounce back game for Buffalo because if they can protect Josh Allen at all, I think that'll make the difference. Now the Bucks games in general have hit the under five of six weeks. The Bucks defense has uh, ruined people's fantasy hopes. What is Rashad white? <laughs> Rashad white. I mean, I faced running... him last week. It was annoying as heck because he, he was the running back. What? 16. And they have points. Rashad White is a volume running back who gets a ton of work and opportunity. He is not an extremely talented running back, so you know things have to break right for him. You hope that he gets, uh, you know, a, a a touchdown in the passing or rushing him. You hope that he gets eight targets in a game. He's really gone back and forth. We we joked about it um, last time we were covering his matchup, but you know, running back thirty eight, then nine, then. 40 then he's top 20 then 37 then 16 he, to me what he is is a flex option that obviously because he's on Thursday night football if you are going to play him move him into your running back uh slot to give you flexibility but he's just someone that is a middling talent and if you think that they're going to get blown out I mean does that really matter for someone that catches the ball so much no he's on pace for 62 receptions on uh 60 five targets so he's catching everything thrown his way I think you were dead on though with how you project him this week as a flex option he has elite usage uh would you play him or or now we know that Roshan Johnson's coming back so Deonta Foreman against the Chargers or Rashad White against a, oh, a Bills man. the Bills rushing defense is the second worst in the NFL in terms of yards per carry given up they're I'd, actually 21st in fantasy points against I'd go White but because he's the Foreman situation, I'm I'm sure, you know, when we actually get to that matchup, we'll discuss it. But it's what do you, what do you possibly do with Bears running backs? Roshan, this whole, the whole season had been groomed to be 
you know, to take over a, a huge workload. But how do you, if you're the Bears and Deonta Foreman does that, how do you not go back to him? Mike Evans, of course, you play him. Mm -hmm. Chris Godwin is this year's Deontay Johnson right now. Yeah. He's uh, on pace he for scored? 93 receptions and zero touchdowns. In fact, uh, Godwin and Judy are two of the most highly targeted players that have not found the end zone at all. Uh, you know, last week, cool, 12 targets, only caught six of them against Atlanta. He's uh, just kind of sitting he, right now. I mean, he had the bye week, but he's sitting outside the top 36 on the year. It's He's still a solid play. Um, I mean, uh, Gabe Davis or Chris Godwin? Chris Godwin. Godwin. I, I, I for would, the PPR value. For the PPR value. Deontay the, Johnson or Chris Godwin? Uh, Chris Godwin. That one I might go Deontay. Yeah, I think that's where I sit. Uh, it's tough. Um, you're not getting goosed by Godwin. No, no. But, no. but so far this year, you also haven't been. What's the opposite of a goose in a good way? Like, what would swan? that be? You're not getting swanned. Okay. You're not getting swanned. Swan, swan is the end. It's the swan song. I uh, No, I think uh, it's great. A beautiful swan? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, what okay. what else What else would it be? Uh, do you wait, want, like, hold a on, dragon? Hold on. I, just... I, for, for, I know we're talking on the podcast, so this is embarrassing, but, like, is a swan, that's the same animal as a goose, right? No. No, they're different. A swan, I, is a swan its own thing? Okay. Yeah. So I will a say swan's this. its own thing? Yeah, like it is. You, so if a, a, a lake is filled, there'd be ducks, there'd be swans, there'd be geese? Yeah, that's possible. I, for some reason, I thought maybe a swan was just a real pretty goose. Uh, when I said that's it, cause of the I, was wait, duckling. I was waiting for someone to be like, <laughs> well, yeah. dude. Yeah, you were, dude, right? that's the same animal. <laughs> so a swan's just its own thing. Yeah, the swan's got the real long neck. What do geese have? I, I'm looking at a photo, swan versus goose. They are totally different just unbelievably <laughs> yeah. different but let me tell you one is ugly one is a beautiful there are beautiful many bird. differences between geese and swans they yeah are. you're right about the whole neck man a goose is i mean the wing you, you'd rather have the longer neck right like if, oh, you're, for if sure. you're choosing what you want to be you want the beauty of the swan you want the massive 10 foot wingspan you don't want a wingspan of geese that's generally between three and four <laughs> feet you are so knowledgeable there. Oh, yeah. man. Exactly. So, like I was saying, you're not getting a goose from Godwin, but you're probably not getting a swan. Right. So, it's like a mallard. <laughs> oh, dude, mallards are great. Oh, you love the mallard. I love me a mallard. That's the, like the iridescent green? Yeah. yeah. This is just a duck. <laughs> just a it, it really is. It is. I mean, yeah, when you say duck, you're thinking about a mallard. Yeah. <laughs> Are we done wow. with this discussion? Can the, Dalton the bird Kincaid? one or the football game? Well, baseball yeah, both, and I, birds. I think, Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Baseball and Birds Pod. Um. Oh, man, we're dumb. We're in off-season form. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> in the middle of just the season. To, just to uh, take a quick straw poll of Deucer's Alley over there, a bunch of knowledgeable individuals. All three of you knew that those were separate animals? Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. That's a 100% hit rate. 100. <laughs> the swan seemed like, you know, like the like the goose wearing the wedding dress. You know what I mean? Like the most elegant. Like if the you queen. Told, if you, the queen of yeah. the geese is the swan. If you told me that a goose <laughs> is a male version and a swan is a female sure. version, I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah I knew <laughs> that. I, of course, I knew that. Everyone yeah. knows that. Yeah, that's that's. Now, that's do you know on. that the the mallard, like the one with the green, that's that's the boy mallard. Wait, what do you mean? There's As female mallards that are ugly? The the female mallards are the all brown ones. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, that makes sense. Usually I So a like mallard is only a male. It's that a, It's a mallard. Uh <laughs> Oh boy. Jason just fell over in his chair. Yeah. Brooks, you want me to hit this outro button? Would you recommend that? Actually, I want to get into a few mailbag questions. Oh, do you now? All yeah. right. Oh. Mailbag. Mallard man. <laughs> I'm so We're sorry, everyone. Woo! Rails. It's Wednesday. Uh, Rap Scan's even smiling over there. <laughs> the train is running down the hill. <laughs> yeah, we're doing good. All right, we have uh, we got voicemail questions, right. Brooksy? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. What's up, ballers? This is Luke. I'm a big fan of the show. Quick question. Is Kirk Cousins now a must-start or an auto-start candidate rest of the season? Thanks, guys. 
No. No, I, I don't no. think so. He, he's, he's been very good. Started the season, obviously, on fire those first three weeks. This last week was great in a tough matchup against San Francisco. Uh, but a lot of that, you know, was like, you know, at the end of the half, he threw a ball that should have been a pick. Yeah. And did. instead of it being a pick, it was like a 70-yard touchdown bomb to Jordan Addison. That You know, it's like he is a pocket passer that's going to need a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns throwing to be to make up for the fact that he's not a mobile rushing quarterback. So to me, he's a streaming option that you play the right matchups and you won't always get it right like Jared Goff. I feel like people think Jared Goff is an auto start. And in, in that respect, I would put Cousins in that category. Yeah, but I, mean, I but I understand like if you say three times, if you say should Kirk Cousins always be in my lineup three times, he will not perform for you. No, he'll get one of those bad. I mean, you know, but he's two, on pace for six hundred eighty pass attempts, brother. Yeah, oh, I love the system that he's in. But you know, how long is he without Justin Jefferson? We we don't know. Could, it, I mean, the nice thing we should talk about that because. Part of the threat of, like, people are, you know, do I trade Justin Jefferson? Do I keep him? Do I wait? Do I not wait? Part of the narrative has been uh, Justin Jefferson might not come back if this team is circling the drain and they trade Kirk Cousins and they – now they're three and four in a winnable division. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to keep competing. The schedule is not they play They play Green Bay this week in I think division. They, they, they win that game, in my opinion. Green I know Bay. it's in Green Bay. It's a close uh, – you know, the – the line green bay atlanta the saints denver chicago wow bye week raiders win 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 those, win, win. Th those are those are five winnable games yeah. so uh, to me like so to jefferson's coming back if that's the case yeah to me kirk cousins is in he i'm playing him like as a as a must start until i until the system changes if you They're had like, to this lock is, this is it's like now i guess brady was was not good last year but the point being they were throwing so much uh, I believe Minnesota has zero rushing touchdowns, which that that will bounce back. They will. I they thought will, you were going to say zero rushing no, attempts this year. They they will eventually get rushing touchdowns, and that will be devastating for for Kirk's value. But they're just throwing it so much, and with even with Jefferson out, you have Addison and Hawkinson. I mean, we those two guys can absolutely get the job done for for fantasy football. So until Further notice, I think that he is in the must start. If, the, he, would you rather lock change. him in or Goff? Kirk. I, I would rather lock Goff in. I'll go I Kirk. think I'm on the Kirk side just because the what is rushing the, game in Detroit's going to have its weeks. Yeah, Monk, well, and Montgomery will be back. What in about? So they play. They have a game this week. They have a game a this week, week, then a bye week. Yeah, so. I expect Montgomery back after that. All right, another voicemail question. Hey, ballers, big fan of the show. Quick question: um, After the Gibbs breakout. Are you trading for Jameer Gibbs? And if so, what would you trade to try to get Gibbs? I am now not, is not the time. Yeah, I am not trading for Gibbs off of a big performance. Right. You trade for him off a bad performance because you believe it will come. Also, I believe that it is probably worse days ahead when David Montgomery comes back and uh, reclaims the – primary ball carrier role not that Gibbs will be bad or irrelevant when Montgomery is back but you know it, 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 let's say Montgomery is back this week right we would rather have Montgomery than Gibbs yes for fantasy purposes going forward right so like I would yeah yeah I, I would I mean I, Andy in the redraft uh basically said he definitely would where he drafted David Montgomery so um yeah I'm not trading high for Jameer Gibbs right now instagram question coming in says can i play josh downs over chris olave and so the uh the old can i that's the <laughs> can you give me permission your, and take the blame if it's wrong it's your team brother you can uh, do whatever you want you can i would not i realize that um you know you've had a couple really good games with josh downs with gardner Minshew. that doesn't mean that it's going to be universal and 100 percent of the time when he got a 59 yard touchdown to start the game on a broken play that is really cool that is not um prescriptive or easily repeatable um points per game olave is still ahead of downs even with the big games i mean he's at 10.4 downs at 9.8 goodness yeah. 15 targets olave last has, week yeah olave had 15 targets Freaking last week Derek Carr. it's just not getting touchdowns one touchdown on the season olave is more talented 
more targeted, more important to the offense. Drives faster. Yeah, yeah that's true. That. That's true. Every, um, then everybody but um, than Ad- Addison. Than Addison. Yep. Um, can you name the top five target leaders in the NFL right now? Ooh. Uh, just totals? Raw totals? Uh, at the wide receiver position. Uh, we'll go – he's not number one, but I'll put Diggs in there. Number two. Uh, Tyreek? Tyreek is number lower. Four. Okay. Number four. Number four. Very, very been, close. He's been crazy. Puka. Oh, yeah. Number, for sure. Number one. <laughs> yeah, number yeah, number yeah, one, yeah. Puka Nakua. Yeah. So you guys got, have nailed three of them. I mean, do you want to take a shot at the last two? I feel like at this point we you got to cash to. out. <laughs> so we have to retire. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know them. You know AJ you know Brown. AJ Brown, number three. So that's one. Puka, two. Digs, three. Brown, four. Hill, five. I think you. I think you're gonna hit it. Mm. I think you're gonna hit it. It's uh, your Shoot. call, Mike. <laughs> I mean. Like, because Keenan missed a game. It's not Keenan. Amon Ra missed mm-hmm. some time yeah, as it's well. Not, it's not Amon Ra. Oh, gosh. Is it me? No, no it's not. No, no, no. It's not. I know who it is. Who? Jamar Chase. It's Jamar Chase. Okay. Oh, there yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's Jamar games. Chase. Okay, so we got we got him. I thought I got in. Do we not, ch- <laughs> do we not have targets per game on our uh, stat sheets? We don't. Uh-oh. Make a note. That would be nice, right? Well, yeah, anything per game would be nice. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. What like, does that mean? I mean, like, you, you know. We, well, we, we have their average. We look at, like. Uh, what are you talking about? We don't have their target average. You're talking about on a list of all Yeah, like on our, on our fantasy oh, footballers oh. Um, uh, stat sheet. Maybe we, we can We have points add... per game, but we don't have targets per game. Well, we don't have anything else per game, right? So maybe we could add a button to convert all totals this to. This is a live dev meeting. Yeah, but, <laughs> but hey. Peel back the curtain. the 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 Footland needs to know we care about how good our tools are and how we use them and what's valuable. Here's Footland. We are going to add this feature where you can. Uh, we are click a button to easily, quickly convert all of these. You can see them all game. individually. You know, like Amon Ra's at eleven point three per game. So if Amon Ra had not been injured, that's well, I can't see the other per game. So never mind. <laughs> all right, that is going to do it for Dan for today's show thank you for joining us all you ducks geese and swans out there you silly mallard all right then we'll move on to starts of the week tomorrow goodbye goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.